because I'm about to let you in on a controversial subject that not a lot of people know about. I told my, my staff, my staff is very diverse about this show, a portion of them, a lot of my producers that happen to be white, were like, Tara, what are you talking about? This black hair woman thing, what? They didn't understand, and I had to explain to them that it's a topic that is so heated, it is so charged in the African American community and in a lot of other cultures that Chris Rock actually spent two years of his life making a movie about it about after his four-year-old daughter, Lola, asked him, Daddy, how come I don't have good hair? Now, uh, when black women talk about good hair, you hear things like hair that's not kinky or coarse or nappy, um, hair like an afro that's not like an afro. You hear, you know, when they say good hair, a lot of them are saying hair that is smooth and straight like a white girl's or an Indian girl's or sometimes a Puerto Rican girl's. And they spend thousands of dollars and countless hours using chemical relaxers and putting weaves in their hair to get it. And I just said they a lot. I should say we. Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So in today's video, we're going to talk about texturism. So, texturism. Texturism can be thought of as the discrimination faced by those with coarser and more Afrocentric textured hair. Texturism is based on the premises that hair textures closer to white are more acceptable. Our conversations about hair discrimination require more nuance and must unpack the texturism that is faced by those with coarser hair textures. Hairstylist Andre Walker is generally thought of as the person who established and popularized the hair typing system that is currently in use. The current hair typing system we often refer today started on the Oprah Winfrey show in the 1990s. Oprah Winfrey stylist Andre Walker created this system to market his hair products, but eventually it was widely adopted and it's still the same hair typing system we use today. The hair chart only categorizes hair by shape and not texture, which is crucial when describing curly, kinky, and coily hair in the 4A and 4C range. Based on Walker's methods, hair type can be divided into distinct categories based on the texture. One is straight hair, two is wavy hair, three is looser curls, and four is considered the coarsest and most tightly curled hair type. Walker's system also associates letters with these numbers to further segment the hair types. Based on the hair typing system, 4C hair is considered to be the kinkiest and most tightly coiled hair texture and by design, the hair texture that experiences the most discrimination. White women with fewer followers had been doing it less time just because their hair was like the loose curl type. And she was just like, you know, it's just so much, like people want to talk about being accepting of who we are naturally, but it's not. Yeah, we're not yeah. we're just inching towards it we're not mm -hmm. there yet because the loose curl is still a eurocentric standard if you mm -hmm. want to be completely honest you know i agree um because i even know people who was, won't show their natural hair until mm -hmm. it's a certain look and length mm -hmm. so i mean <laughs> yeah. still wait. Mm -hmm. no, no 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 yeah <laughs> so, and it's been years like you know because they don't feel comfortable with it and even myself i'm not even gonna lie i have moments where i'm like you know even with my hair now if I put my hair in this bun and I'm looking at it, I'm like, this part is just too fucking furry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I had to get myself because I'm like, because. The first natural hair movement emerged in the 1960s. Black activists were embracing their natural hair and afros were being celebrated as a symbol of power and resistance. A re-emerge of the natural hair movement occurred in the 2000s. 
during this time. Black hair was being promoted and on social media websites like YouTube, and there was a rise in natural hair blocks. Around this time, there, were, there was a, mo a move away from the use of chemical straighteners like relaxers due to the wealth of research indicating how harmful these chemical straighteners were. To style my hair the way I want, I've got to have extra body. That's why I always use the dark and lovely Excel bodybuilding relaxer system. It lets me relax my hair and it builds body at the same time. And with extra body, I can wear as many different styles as I want. And isn't that what body is all about? Excel bodybuilding relaxer system. Style by yours truly, body by Excel. With the popularity of the natural hair movement, there was a swift move to monetize and monopolize on, on a booming industry. A 2020 Essence article indicated that, that the black hair care industry generates an estimated $2.5 billion with that number likely to grow as time goes on. Even within a movement that was designed to be inclusive, hierarchies were formed, unfortunately. Majestic and still lovely, and now I'm Marge Simpson. Boom, there it goes. I think that a lot of people associate being Latina with having hair that's not disagreeable. But that's not true. Sometimes it's down like this, and then sometimes I have to put it up if I have to, like, you know, run after a train or run after a person or run after a mugger or run after my girlfriend. If we slept together and you woke up and you looked over, this is what you'll find. This back section is my Puerto Rican section. And then in the middle, we have Fiddler on the Roof. It doesn't curl, doesn't want to cooperate, it just wants to do its thing, but that's not allowed. It's like regal, it's beautiful, it's empowering. A phrase that you always hear is pelo malo. So I used to say, Mi pelo no es malo porque nunca le he hecho nada a nadie. One time had an aunt say to me that I'm more black than I am Latina now that my hair is natural. You have to look neat. I'm like, so you're telling me looking neat means keeping my hair buzz cut low? Oh, your hair kind of looks like a sheep. I was like, what do you mean? And then he pets my hair. He's like, bah. When I went to my stylist who's at the Dominican salon and I told her that I was going natural. She was just like, why would you do that? Oh, and look at that fajon or like rat's nest. Can I see? Can I touch it? What does it feel like? It looks soft, but is it soft? It totally bothers me when people come and touch my hair, especially without permission. They'll be like, oh, I like that. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa. Yes, you may have questions and that's fine, but do not walk up to me and touch my hair. Individuals with 4C hair experience prejudice in a multitude of ways. In 2009, Chris Rock explored the importance of hair within the black community in his documentary, Good Hair. Relaxer, the closest thing we have to a nap antidote. For all you white people out there that don't know what it is, you name a black woman, any black woman, no matter how famous or infamous. They've either had their hair relaxed or they're having their hair relaxed right now. And a lot of black men too. If your hair is relaxed, white people are relaxed. If your hair is nappy, they're not happy. So what's your definition of good hair? Some that looks relaxed and nice. Yeah, relaxed has to be straight. Wow, what do you have there? Is that a buck of a relaxer? No doubt, baby. <laughs> relaxer also known by its government name, sodium hydroxide. Relax is the chemical that will take a black woman's hair from this and change it into this. Wow. Look at it. July, I think. How old was she? Three. She had turned three in June. Do you like getting perms? I got a little three-year-old, Zara. She don't have a perm, though, not yet. Should I get one, Paul? Yes. Okay. Why should Zara get a perm? Chris, you're supposed to get a perm. Because everybody's supposed to get a perm? Yes. Okay. What must receive an equal amount of attention and discussion is the ways that texturism manifests in present day. From journalists making derogatory remarks about 
the then seven year old daughter of Beyonce and Jay Z, being bullied for wearing her natural hair without manipulation. Y'all went crazy over this pic, but let's go back real quick. Y'all spent years, and I mean years, calling this little girl ugly because of her black features and her 4C type curly hair. There were so many comments about her hair never being done because it was in its natural state. Mm. But soon as it retained a little length, a little volume, and just got a little looser curl pattern, y'all went crazy. Oh, she looked just like her mom. Her hair is so beautiful. And da -da 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 -da. But y'all swear y'all don't perpetuate self-hate. Mm. This is for the girls who swear we were never picked on because of our type 4C curly hair. And we were never picked on because of our dark skin. That's bull. We was. Just like y'all did her. Just like y'all gassing her now. Like, y'all kill me. <laughs> One minute we not in. Next minute we in. One minute we not. Sh next minute we the shit. Make up your mind. And the backlash over a young black girl's hair in an H&M ad. Texturism is still alive and well. Those with 4C hair are often charged more at hair salons because this type of this hair type is deemed as being more difficult to deal with. I'm actually gonna stop crying. Wait, I have to be at work in 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it look presentable to the public. Wet it first with some of this. I can't go like this. My hair is only long enough to do little space buttons. Is that a bit childish for work? <laughs> what do you do? What do you, like, what do you do? Smoothie styler. I didn't know black people could use tangle teasers. They're actually pretty sick. I don't think I have enough hair to do a high bun. Wait, what is that hump? 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, wait, I'm actually, okay, I'm, okay, I'm gonna have a perk that. Maybe a bow? No. <sighs> my arms. <laughs> I'm actually gonna start crying. Wait, this looks really bad. It's okay to laugh at ourselves every now and then. It's okay. <laughs> All jokes aside, though. I have 4C hair. Trust me, I have 4C hair. I know people are like, that's not 4 hair. My hair is 4C hair. Trust me and believe me. It's 4C hair. I'll show a picture of my hair type, but I know what my hair do, and it is not easy. You know it's bad when your hairstylist tells you to get a perm. Like they, I've had two hairstylists tell me this. Professionals, they own their own salons and everything. They're not fake professional, they're real professionals. And they both told me to get perms. So I did that, and my mom, gave me a perm when I was a child. So I was already, I grew up with that stigma of putting relaxer in my hair anyway. I tried to go natural as an adult my, myself and I did it three times, but I couldn't figure out products for my hair, nor could I find somebody to do my hair because when I did, they told me to get a perm. So it's like, what do you, you know, hair discrimination is real. So when analyzing the natural hair community, 4C hair representation is lacking. 4C hair does not receive the same amount of recognition or appreciation as other hair types. And many natural hair bloggers and YouTubers have spoken about this throughout the years. The idea of wearing my hair curly is terrifying. I can't say I slept much. Can't say I didn't have some nightmares. Literally, I had a nightmare about my hair I'm looking a mess today. Uh, but no, it feels good. I've had a lot of people out there cheering me on, so I certainly appreciate it. Well, it all started uh, with that video a couple of weeks ago that went viral with two and a half million views and thousands of comments. I was simply answering a question that I've gotten a lot. Why don't you wear your hair curly more often? Specifically, why don't you do it on air? And I was shocked at the reaction. I wasn't expecting that. I went on to share a story because of the reaction that I got about uh, when I was younger. And the first time I kind of realized that my hair texture wasn't really the preferred one. For context, uh, I grew up in a Dominican community where curly, coily hair, the curlier it was, the worse or less attractive it was considered. 
So when I was about seven years old, I was at a uh, hair salon with my sister who had straighter hair texture, more preferred, and I say that in quotations, and uh, the hairstylists were arguing about who would do my hair. And they were going back and forth, and I was confused about what the big deal was. And then the person who got stuck doing my hair, I just, I mean, it just ruined her day. She's huffing and puffing. She's combing through my hair. And then my hair breaks the comb. And in that moment, I was so embarrassed and I was so ashamed. And that's when I realized your hair really isn't what society deems as acceptable. The reason I decided to do this um, ultimately was because a lot of moms and dads uh, told me my daughters would love to see you on TV with curly hair, someone who looks like them. And it reminded me of the seven-year-old me who felt the way I did at such a young age and how much it would have meant to me to see somebody who was rocking their natural hair and was proud of it. Growing up having a certain hair type and seeing all around you people who don't have that same hair type, it can take a toll on your mental, especially when you're a child, and especially if your mother never instilled hair confidence into you. My mom took the easy route and gave me a perm in the second grade, a relaxer. I would get relaxers and hot comb treatments throughout my entire childhood. I only knew straight hair as a child. I knew something about my hair was different and I would get teased for wearing pigtails in, when I was in younger grades. And you know, growing up in majority non-black environments, of course, it wasn't until I moved around a majority African American and mixed culture communities is where I would get the opposite treatment, of course, but that's due to colorism and featureism because in non-black communities, if you're black and you're and they're racist, you're just black to them. But in an African American community with the type of phenotype that I have, when and especially if they have a hierarchy mindset, it's not all people in the African American community, it's not all. But if you have a certain phenotype and you're in the African American community, there's this hierarchy mindset where they put lighter skinned people on a pedestal with certain features. So I would get treated differently around them. And you know, it's interesting being a 4C girly with lighter skin because of the treat, it's, you get a different type of treatment because it's like you're not supposed to have 4C hair if you look like that. True story, people have said to me, wow, you're the lightest skinned person I've ever seen with an afro that kinky. What can I say? I guess I'm just a kinky bitch. <laughs> guess I didn't foresee that happening. Don't cut on my neck for saying this, but I feel like I'm not considered light skin because I don't have the light skin curly pretty hair. I have 4C hair. I'm pretty. I'm definitely light, but I don't feel like people on the streets would be like, oh, she's light skinned. I don't know. I, I will never forget my little cousin when I went to go visit home, like back home when I was younger. Like I, I grew up multicultural and my family that we went to go visit lived in the hood. So it's monocultural. And so I just remember coming to visit and my little cousin looking up at me, but you're not supposed to have that type of hair he said something to that effect like you're not supposed to have that hair like you know it looked like he was probably six seven years old or something like that but i've heard a lot of lighter skinned people with 4c hair talk about this also <laughs> so it's just interesting something i observed you do kind of get that uh but you're not that you're not supposed to have that type of hair <laughs> it's just interesting with this in mind, I I had somewhat of a complex also with going to hair salons in the black communities because we call people who are in the black community monoracial black women who are either light skinned or have features that make them look like they could be mixed race or of another race. We call them exoticals in this community. So as an exotical, in my experience, when I've gone to black hair salons, unfortunately, if the hairstylist is unambiguous, nine times out of ten, their hairstyle 
either didn't fit me, was not attractive, had too much product in it, either got burned, or just never liked the end result at all. I just never liked the end result. One thing about being pretty and methodical in the hood, there is a lot of passive aggressive tension with unambiguous black women, not all. It, I mean, I'm just, this is my birthday. You make your hair appointment, but you have bad luck with your hair appointment. You get to the shop, she get to the shop, she start doing my hair, she rushing. This was the fourth red flag, y'all. Eleven come around and watch somebody come in, talk about she here for her appointment. And she said, oh, give me 10 minutes, I'll be done in 10 minutes. And she barely was sewing in my tracks. So in my head, I'm just thinking like, well, damn, how you gonna finish my hair in 10 minutes? I'm not no stylist, but the math ain't math then. After that, she's rushing. She's rushing to do my hair, trying to finish in 10 minutes, but she didn't even finish until 12. And I'm rushing too, because I got somewhere to be. So when she was done with my hair, I didn't really look in the mirror. Like I looked at the front, you know, like, okay, yeah, it's flat. I didn't look at the inches. She gets a huge shock when she looks in the mirror. So I got home and the first thing I did was went to the mirror so as y'all can see it's puffy it the the cut is not even the layers is not layering i don't know what she did i didn't even ask for layers but if you was gonna do layers you could at least did better so i am heated the only thing that i could think of me and my boyfriend was to go back up there and maybe like somebody else could fix it maybe flat iron it better because i was not gonna be trying to flat iron my hair and i just paid to get my hair done because if that was the case i would have just did my hair she's about to lose her cool Go back to the shop, look to the girl. Why the f I go back to the... Hey. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. I went back to the hair shop, y'all, right? So I asked the girl, what do you think about this cut? Like, if you just got your hair done and you walked out the shop, like, how would you feel about your hair? She said, you know what? I'm not even gonna lie to you. It could be straighter. So she went and she was like, hold on, let me go get the girl and I'll be right back. So she went to go get the girl and the girl comes out with another girl. So at this point, they're 3D. They pretty much asking me like, what's your problem? Like, what's wrong with you? And then the girl keep trying to cut her off like, they're Amazon bundles, they're bad bundles, da 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 If you, like, I'm not buying my bundles from you. You think I'm gonna buy my bundles from you after your, what professionalism do you have? So at this point, I start getting kind of mad and kind of irritated because don't try to blame it on the hair that I bought because I've already used this hair and I did it the last time I used it and it was perfectly fine. It's been an awful experience. So I end up crying trying to like express how I feel and my boyfriend ends up taking over and just was like, you know what, honestly, she just want her hair fixed. She, we have somewhere to go in, in the next five hours and she just want her hair done. She ended up getting the attitude and just throwing her hands up and was like, you know what, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. And was like, you can fix her hair if you want to, but I'm not. So the girl that she came out with, she was like, I'm so sorry you have to go through this. You know, I'm gonna try my best to help you. She was being so accommodating, so nice. Yes. I'm mad my hair didn't turn out how it turned out, but like. So that's when um I I walked into her suite and I'm like, hey, you know, hey, she off the rip like this girl just has such a nasty attitude. But I was still like, you know, people go through things. She probably just having a bad day, you know, just having a bad day. So my she didn't even start my hair like as soon as like possible, you know. She just kept like picking up trash and shit for like ten minutes straight, y'all. I'm standing on the chair ten minutes straight. She like taking trash out, doing all these other things. And I'm still sitting there, you know. So time comes, she like starts my hair. So she finally like comes to like behind me, comes behind me. So she starts touching my hair. She like, why your hair like this? Why does it look like that in the front? Why is this that? I'm like, y'all, for a moment, I thought I was dreaming because what do we? I know like I have heat damage, but I get leave outs all the time. No stylist have, has ever, like even the way she was saying it, it gave we were best friends. It gave we best friends and you feel comfortable. Like, no, y'all, she was so rude. Like that was so nasty. I was like, for a moment, I thought I was dreaming. I was like, wait, she ain't just say that. Then she said it again. But I'm still calm. I'm like, uh, I have heat. I was trying to explain to her, you know, I have heat damage. I've cut my hair several times, you know. And then that's when she starts molding it down, y'all. She's yanking my hair. Like, she's braiding it down, molding it. I don't even know what she was doing, but all I know is pain, pain, y'all. And y'all, I get quick weaves all the time. It's never no, like, when they're molding it, when they're braiding it. I'm not tender head. Like, this shit hurts. Like, she was yanking my fucking hair. So that was cool. I was still being calm because, you know, I'm still, maybe she having a bad day, you know? Cool. So that's when she's finished, like, molding it down, space, got to be sprayed, whatever. Pours boiling water on an MLS woman's head. <laughs> I'm 
So while she was pouring the boiling water on her scalp, um, you could literally see these women like smirking in the background. One of the girls is like rolling her eyes. Look at this girl right here. She's literally rolling her eyes. So I'm assuming this is in another country. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But to me, it appears as if the other women are just smirking and rolling their eyes. Uh, usually if your client is in pain while you're doing their hair, normally you would stop doing what you're doing. I went to one hair salon and they completely ruined my hair after five years of growing it out. Please let this be your sign to be careful where you get your hair done. For reference, this is what my hair looked like at the salon, just straight out of braids. And then these first two pictures are like the most recent cuts of my hair. And this is old. Genetically, no one in my family has long hair. I like take care of my hair and have a strict routine. I went to one salon. I was in Africa and everyone's like, no, you have to get your hair done here. Yeah, I did. I did. I have to cut it. I literally have to cut it off. I'm just going to cut it. It's going to be uneven. I don't even care. It's okay. My hair is healthy. I am still beautiful. It's fine. I honestly feel like this environment, the hair salon, is where many unambigu unambiguous black women passively aggressively can get away with or this is where they take the opportunity to mistreat an exotical because this is a beauty salon i've had too many negative experiences with them and it's never like that with the lighter skin hairstylist let's just keep that in mind and i'm not kidding i honestly feel like the hair salon is where they get to flex the most in their if they do in your hair I had one hairstylist for years that was light skinned and my hair was always healthy and fine. And she did my hair for years and then when I would switch it up every now and then, and I would get somebody unambiguous, my hair just did not come out looking great. It just didn't. Um, but all of this hair trauma affects how I grew up feeling about my hair, you know, until I went into high school and I started learning about natural hair. and. That's when Tommy Sotomayor was out and he was talking about hair weaves and hair relaxers and how they don't look natural on us. And that made me think like, yeah, they, I mean, I can kind of get away with it, but I know what he's saying. So I wanted to, you know, try it myself. We're telling these children before, when you're putting a fucking wig on a three-year-old. That's insane. But they're doing it. You've seen it. Yeah. And you don't yeah. see no men doing it. I'm There's no man that's sitting up there saying my daughter's ugly because of her natural hair. But you will hear these women saying it. And I'm an 80s baby, and you know what I'm talking about. How many girls had to go to school when we were young with that burn up here from the straight comb? Look, you know what I'm talking about. You don't fuck sucking up black dick. You know it. You know it. Anyway, but they got the burn on their ear from oh, that yeah. shit. And you got these little girls feeling like they can't stand themselves. Yeah, and then like, and, 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 like the Indian girls. Imagine for them saying... What I grow naturally, I can sell to these other people for thousands of dollars. Thousands. Yeah. Yeah. You and want to cut her hair, but she has short hair, you would mm -hmm. still buy it? Of course, yeah. Okay. Um, we try not to, to uh, turn away anybody, just because everybody needs help. So this one is going to be one of our long ones. <gasps> this one is pure virgin Remy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so long. This level of high quality hair isn't something you can fake. And as soon as I saw Dan's hair, I knew he was doing something right. But he invited us out to see for ourselves. Dan travels across the region to buy hair in person and at a fair rate. Here in the countryside, having long hair is still an important sign of femininity. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Yeah. For Win T. Twee, it's a promise of a better future. Gia đình khó khăn rồi kiếm thêm chút đỉnh tiền để xây sở trong gia đình. Will you miss your long hair? Rất là nhớ tiếc tóc mái tóc này lắm. Nó rất đẹp mướt mượt. Coi như là mái tóc này là một lát nữa cắt đi là mình rất là buồn. Không biết mình nghĩ cái mái tóc ngắn mình như thế nào nữa. Tóc này á là cũng nhiều người họ đến hỏi lắm rồi nhưng mà không bán. 
trả rất là thấp. Because for the previous times they only offer about two or three dollars for her hair. That's like actually criminal. À, cái chú này đến hỏi là trả giá cao cho nên đồng ý bán. It hits home that the hair trade starts with women like Twi. Behind many of these wigs and extensions is a woman making the tough choice to sell her hair to better her life. She ties Twi's hair to avoid tangling and to keep it all in the same direction after it's been cut. It looks beautiful. We, I think you look beautiful. You look young and fresh and really pretty. <laughs> um, I, I relax it and I put weave in it because it's just easier for me to manage. Wait, how old is she? She's eight. She's eight and you put weave in her hair? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, and she's got thick hair, but, you know, we get up in the morning and it's easier for me to unwrap her hair and go than sit there and put ponytails in it. Um, being a mom that had a child of color, did you ever think to maybe get taught of how, how to do her hair? I, I have, and I've learned, but... What, without know, the relaxers at such a young age? Without the chemicals yeah, on the scalp? Yeah, but my life, it, and really, it's selfish. I mean, I'm the one that's doing it for me because my life is so busy that I don't have the time to sit there mm -hmm. and do her hair in the morning or do it in the evening. And then we have um, Michelle, and you're Rainisha's mom. Yep. And uh, tell me, how old your daughter? She's three. And uh, how do you do her hair? I relax her hair also. You chemically straighten your three-year-old daughter's hair? Yep. You chemically straighten her hair? Yep. And when did this start? Um, this started about four months ago. Um, when she was born, she had really good hair. She had what hair? She had really good hair. And which what does is, that mean? Um, I consider good hair nice and curly, soft. Um, about two and a half years old, it started getting nappy. So I tried to blow dry it, straighten it. Um, I tried everything, it doesn't work. And now that I perm my daughter's hair, she feels comfortable with me doing her hair. I could put a comb through it. I could, it's easy to manage. It doesn't take long, she doesn't cry, and she loves it. Of course, every little black she girl cries it. when her hair is done and <laughs> getting done and a mama's combing the, yeah. you know, the comb through it to get that ponytail. But I, putting a relaxer that early, I don't know. That To me, that seems like not healthy, mentally and physically for the child. Well, I think, if it was, if it wasn't, then they wouldn't make it for young kids. Three years old? I don't know if it's for three years old. And, you know, as it's growing, I'm trying to figure out how to keep it from drying so much because my hair has, my hair dries so quick within seconds. I'm not kidding. When I get out the shower, if it's soaking wet, it'll be dry in seconds. It's crazy. So I just don't know how to maintain it, manage it. I can't find nobody to help me manage it. The problem is really finding products and a hair and a hair and a hairstylist that can do my hair. That when I was natural, because I've been natural three times in my adult life, because I wanted to try it, but I just could never find the right hairstylist or the right product. For the love of God, can someone with actual 4C hair please inform me on how to style my hair? Because I have hair where the middle is 10 times longer than the back. Like the back does nothing. Like. Why? Why is it so long? And like the sides is about medium. But like, so like, you know, if I put my hair like just in a fro, then it literally looks like a faux hawk, which I think is the most grotesque hairstyle out there. So sorry if you have a faux hawk. But then it's still not long enough for me to like lay it to the sides. And I'm not gonna lie, my hair will perpetually be this length. No matter how long it grows, shrinkage keeps it at this length. So I just want to know how people style, because I, I don't want to have to stretch my hair. Like, how do people style their hair? Like, am I just going to have to cut the middle of my hair so that I have an even fro? Somebody help. So until they invent, like, a product that can really take care of that dryness, I have to wear a relaxer. That's what literally a lot of hairstylists have told me this when I would try to get my natural hair done. They was like, oh girl, you need a relaxer. This is, they will always say this, I'm not kidding. I am not joking. But also, so also 
I know watching cartoons as a child didn't help either with my self-image with my hair because from the Disney movies to the music videos. What does our world tell us about hair? From fairy tales to advertisements, movies and music videos, our icons are typically lusciously locked. Long flowing hair has been a powerful marker of being a woman. But that's not how Afro-textured hair grows. Our hair generally grows upward and is tightly coiled, like this and like this. So what does our world tell us about Afro hair? Black students at the prestigious Pretoria High School for Girls protested a clause that banned wide cornrows, braids and dreadlocks. There's an online petition demanding <laughs> that Beyonce and Jay-Z do something about their daughter, Blue Ivy's hair. One commentator said, quote, no child whose mom spends thousands on her hair monthly should live life looking like a sheep. Right now, school administrators say the girl's hair is a problem and it needs to be straightened or she'll get kicked out. But her mom doesn't understand how her hair looking like this is wrong. Mystic Valley Regional Charter School says the two sophomore students' hair extensions violates its dress code. So they're being disciplined with detention and are prohibited from taking part in extracurricular activities. Mainstream beauty doesn't have black women in mind. Instead, black women with Afro hair are expected to conform to an aesthetic that values straight hair. That desire for straight hair is a construct that started during colonization. Even to the women at church and my family with weaves and extensions, that can affect myself. That can affect your self-image as a kid as well, and especially when your mom's not doing nothing about it. So it's just like you're just dealing with it. You don't have any. You don't know who you are. You're a child. So and you're just seeing all this straight hair around you. I used to play with dolls with long hair and everything. So it was a real complex with my hair. Um, but don't get me wrong though. I love my 4C hair texture. When I was natural and everything, the problem, like I told you guys, is just maintaining it. I am not a hairstylist. I've even tried to go to cosmetology school and I just still don't know how to do hair. I've tried. Um, until I can, until that magic product is invented. If you guys even know a product, put it in the comment section for the 4C girlies that are on the same struggle as I am. Because, you know, even when you have a relaxer, you still deal with new growth and, you know, I'm trying to figure out products, how to keep my hair from drying so much because, you know, my hair is relaxed now, but it still dries. It still dries. You know what I'm if saying? If your hair gets wet really easily in the shower and the curls elongate like this, it could be a sign that you have high prosty hair. High prosty hair absorbs moisture really easily, but it also loses moisture very easily. That's why you put all this product on your hair and you're confused as to why it feels dry right after. So if you want a leave-in conditioner that actually locks in moisture, here's a good option for you. The Camille Rose Honey Hydrate Leave-In Conditioner is an excellent option for people with high prosty hair. It's super rich, so you should only use a dime-sized amount and make sure you apply it to soaking wet hair. This is because it doesn't contain any water. Instead, its primary ingredients are propane diol, olive oil, and honey. Both propane diol and honey are humectants that draw moisture from the outside environment towards your hair and helps keep it there. That's going to be key for people with high porosity hair whose hair easily loses water and has all that moisture evaporate out of their hair leading to dryness. While this product does not contain proteins which are great for high porosity hair, it does contain heavy oils such as olive oil. This can penetrate the actual strands of your hair, deliver more moisture and strength to it and also reduce breakage and frizz. Finally, the ricinoleic acid within the castor oil will help seal your hair and also prevent moisture loss. Follow for more unbiased, science-backed, ultra-personalized product recommendations. So it's just trying to figure out how to keep it from being undry all the time. Like, all the time. It's like a desert. <laughs> I love it to death because it's different, it's unique. For the love of me, I would love to stay natural. If I go for the fourth time, I might lock it or something. I might, I might, I've been on that fence for a while, like locking it. So I don't know. But we have to help each other out with self promoting our 4C hair beauty. So I'm gonna, I try to promote it as much as possible in my thumbnails, my videos. I try to put natural girlies because it is about self promotion. Because, you know, we gotta self promote ourselves because. Our hair isn't accepted in this society. It's just not. And 
we have to just learn self-love, self-confidence, find the beauty in it. Our hair is the only hair that goes up. Everybody else's hair goes down, so we're different. You know, even if you have a relaxer, you know, you just got to do what works for you. I know people say relaxers are good for our hair, and I'm not promoting relaxers, but I'm saying just you got to do what works for you. You just That's what I did. I tried natural. I tried relaxed. So I'm just I'm just doing what works, and my hair has been growing fine with relaxer. As I, I'm actually, my hair has been growing actually pretty well. So, I got a, the I got like a, a hair a serious haircut like a year ago, and it's growing how it's supposed to grow. A hair grows six inches a year, so if it's not growing six inches a year, you're probably experiencing breakage, which is a problem with 4C girlies. We experience breakage because of the dryness. So that's why we can't seem to retain length all the time. So it's not because our hair type. So like many, I used to think that relaxed hair couldn't grow long and strong and I was wrong. <laughs> so these are the things that I did that really helped me to grow my relaxed hair. One, I started stretching my relaxers. I now relax every four months or so and for me, that's good. Two, I stopped using grease and I started using all natural hair oils. Unlay hair oil is amazing and that's the hair oil that really took my hair to the next level. Two, I started using hair strengtheners and really practiced low manipulation styling. I'll put my hair in a bun for a week and leave it alone. So if you are a natural hair stylist and you have tips for us, please drop it in the comment section and I will pin your comment. <laughs> I can think I could only pin one comment at a time, but please put your tips for 4C girlies in the comment section. <laughs> we must analyze the ways that we perpetuate texturism within our families and communities. Do we encourage the narrative that straight hair, long hair, and looser curls on girls, women, and femmes are more acceptable and more beautiful? We must encourage and amplify more platforms designed to center for c hair. Supporting those that speak out about texturism and who are most harmed by hair discrimination is vital, and educating others about this type of discrimination is imperative. So yes, especially growing up for me with 4C hair and being around nothing but a majority white people and Asian people growing up, because I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up around majority black people. And so that influenced how I saw my hair. Anyway, I told y'all when I was in third grade, I cut the kitchen out. You know what they call the kitchen in the back of your neck? I used to cut, I cut that out when I was in third grade in class. In the middle of class, I remember feeling them and cutting them out, grabbing my scissors and cutting them out. Because I just was the only one with that type of hair, you know? My, it's, you know, when you have a perm and your hair gets nappy after a couple of days, your kitchen starts to come back. And I remember cutting it in class. I will never forget this day. I don't know. I was being picked on real bad this day, I think, because I was, I was being picked on. I was like the only black kid in the class. It was in Hawaii, a bunch of Filipinos and Asian people. So I got picked on for my hair. And then watching TV and seeing the Disney princesses with their long hair and everything, it influences how you see yourself, whether subconsciously or not i mean it's programming you to not think your hair is pretty and people are gonna be people people are gonna talk about our hair type people don't understand our hair type so people can say all they want to say about oh why don't y'all just do this or why don't y'all just do that if you don't have type 4 hair you don't know the experience so it's a completely different hair type it, it's a completely it's, it needs to be treated a completely different way than everybody else's hair type so because of that there's a lacking products and that's why our hair stays so dry and brittle because our hair type is so unique and different so keep it in mind keep that in mind that your hair is unique and different it's nothing, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing bad about type 4 hair. It's unique and it's different and it's exotic. It's the only hair type that goes up towards God. So, you know, we, 
it's a battle it, it's for me i'm still working on it you know what i'm saying so i'm really thinking about locking up eventually i don't know yet i kind of like to switch my hairstyles up that's the only thing about it that's the only thing about it but don't get it twisted just because you know a female has a relaxer in her hair that doesn't mean she has self-hate towards her hair type it's just easier to manage who told us we should keep our hair natural guys who said we should like be super protective over our hair i'm saying goodbye to not putting chemicals to my hair i'm doing it guys because i feel like if it makes my hair more manageable then why not i'm just gonna do it hair grows back it's not that deep i was actually so set on relaxing my hair like with my chest i was like hey I want to relax my hair, but then um, the hairstylist was actually like, no, no, girl. Like, your hair texture, relaxer would ruin it. So instead, she suggested a treatment called a texture release. So that's what I opted for. Um, the benefits of texture release is that, like, it's just a chemical that's going to be in your hair. And it's going to make your hair texture a bit more manageable. So in terms of, like, when you apply heat to it it's gonna be like a smoother process um because basically with the texture release the chemical like sits on your hair and it makes your hair more like tolerant to like heat so when you're like straightening it and you're blowing it out it just makes it more susceptible to that so like yeah it's just easier to like do those heat related um processes to your hair honestly at this point i was like nervous because i was not a believer honestly texture release like who are you miss ma'am because I've never done this before. I've only done relaxer previously before I went natural. What pushed me to get like this type of treatment is because like I feel like I'm in an era of my life where I just want to wake up in the morning without having to undo any braid outs or twist outs and just head out. So I just want to embrace just wearing my hair and just give protective hairstyles a rest at least for like a month and just see what happens with just like rocking my hair so i'm gonna be investing in good quality products that like nurture my hair when it's out and then see what happens yo guys i look a bit crazy you know a mango when like you're eating it yeah and then towards the ends and you know you're like licking it like why momona this is what this is giving at this point i was like oh my god what have i done i can't go back ah! But this is the end result. Like, the hair is moving. Yeah. Yeah. Do you follow? And like I said, people who don't understand type 4 hair, they're going to say what they, they're not going to understand. So, they're not going to understand. Like, why are you guys getting relaxed? It's so bad for your hair. We, 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 we know these things, but we have to deal with this hair. Y'all don't, so... I hope this documentary kind of opens your eyes a little bit to the life of a type 4 hair, either girly or a guy, because <laughs> the guys have it too. They just shave theirs off, but females, we like our hair long, so <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm totally fine with speaking about the fact that I wear a weave. Um, I've had different kinds since I can remember, and uh, I think the reason I feel that way is because underneath it all, I'm very confident in my own personal hair. Uh, even though I'm wearing this, in my mind, I feel like I still have my short curly hair going on, and that's what I wear in front of my friends, that's what I wear when I'm at home, and when I work, you know, there's a certain look that there has to be, but I I'm comfortable, and I think that's why I was, be I was able to be so open with Chris Rock in this film. Speaking of, speaking of work, I mean, you are a successful businesswoman and you're also a brand you know, on television and films. How free are you to kind of change your style without with, with affecting your brand? Like, could, could you just wake up and say, well, I'm going to be natural now? Yeah, I did that and I went on the red carpet and someone called me a poodle on the internet. Interesting, isn't it? But I'm able to change it up now because of the fact that I'm growing up. I remember when That's the Raven first ended, I cut all my hair off. I had this short bob that went down to the front. It was like apricot and red and black. And I remember my representation at the time was like, oh my God, what are we gonna do? And I said, it's just hair. I left the black, I left the black in the front so I can put a weave in at any time. They didn't understand Chris Rock, the movie needs to come out earlier. <laughs> but that's, that's the cool thing about it because I can have whatever I want 
as me personally that might go against what other people might think I should have on. And then always, you know, put it together when I need to, too. So, so what's in your hair now? A few things. This hair underneath the other hair is thick hair. This is a weave right now. This is a weave. That's my edges and everything. I have pieces that are kind of like, you know, like extensions. Right now I have clips in my hair. I've attached um, two pieces here because I want a little more fullness. Mine is a one unit, like, like that. Like even now as an adult, I wear clip-ins on top of my hair. And I prefer to wear clip-ins over like the sew-ins only because you can, number one, you can take the clip-ins out at the, like every day. Like you don't have to keep it in because it's sewn in. You just take it in and out. It only takes me a few minutes to install it in the morning. And when I get off of work, it only takes me a few minutes to uninstall it. And I get to take care of my natural hair, you know, when it's not in. Because I, I like length. I'm a girly who likes length. So that's why I wear them in the first place. And I should only wear partially. I like to show out most of my real hair so it can blend. You know, I like to it to look like it's natural. People ask me all the time, is my hair real? So, or you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't tell if it's a weave or not. Usually if it's a lace front or it's, uh, you know, unless you want people to know it's a wig and you don't care, it usually looks like a wig and people just know it's a wig. You know, if you're phenotype don't fit necessarily. So, I would suggest wearing wearing extensions and weaves that match your hair type because the it looks more natural and it looks better overall on you you know what i'm saying because everything don't look good on everybody because of our undertones and stuff but you know you can do what you want to do but and you know for me personally i just prefer to do things that i can get away with and because I'm a beauty enhancement girly so but I only I only go I have a limit I don't I don't do things <clears throat> I won't do things that I know I can't get away with like I would never wear green co colored contacts I'd wear like hazel or light brown and that's it like I like enhancing my features. I don't like to completely change them, but to each his own, of course. It's just this is what I just prefer, that's all. No shade to anybody who, you know, does those. Because, you know, we all have our, we all, it's our bodies, we do what we want to do. And, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, can't nobody tell, if you're grown, you're grown, right? But, you know, I'm just giving suggestions, you know, I would suggest because it does look better to try to match your hair type. That's all. You know, sometimes I'll switch my style up with more curls, but as far as my 4C hair being seen, I haven't shown my 4C hair in like a year. I, I, I literally got a version relaxed for like a year ago because I just keep going back and forth. Let me try it again, let me try it again. Let me see if new products came out for my hair so it can be managed more. Like my son even has my hair type and we cannot find products for anything. I look everywhere, even like, I might have to buy, pay more money, I don't know. <laughs> there is no products for a force, real 4C hair, like real 4C hair with my velocity and everything. I think, I think I have high velocity. My hair dries up like within seconds after I get it soaking wet, it's dry within seconds. Seconds, not minutes, seconds, I'm not kidding. So, yeah, hair discrimination is real. This is for Black women with 4C hair only. Ever notice that there are some women who make shady comments about your hair, and then when you get your hair done, they still make shady comments about your hair, especially when you get a wig or a sew-in. They always have to tell everyone in earshot that you have in a wig or a sew-in basically implying that the only reason why you look so good and you feel so good is because you have in a wig or a sewing or if you wear braids and you want to touch up they say something like this 
oh, I see you're always wearing braids. I don't really wear braids a lot because I have good hair. You know, my hair isn't thick enough for braids, something shady like that, because that's happened to me before. And then when you have an event to go to and you want to get your hair done, people say, oh, why do you want to touch up your hair? It's fine. Even though you have tons of new growth coming out of your braids and it's fuzzy as hell, like right now. And you're thinking like, I feel like you just don't want me to look good or you don't want me to look better than you because I don't know why you're so concerned with my hair, especially when you're the same person who gets their hair done and your edges are always laid. Yet you're always talking about how I always get my hair done and I must hate my natural hair. It's okay to get your hair done. It's okay to change up your hairstyle. There is nothing wrong with 4C hair, but there is nothing wrong with changing up your hair. And I don't know how we can fix it, but other, other than more representation. And that's why I try to post as much natural hair girlies on my page as possible, because we have to reprogram ourselves. You understand? So I hope I was able to help anybody with this video, educate them more on hair discrimination. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening. You cannot define 4C hair. It's not possible. That's what I've been told like over a hundred different times. But your boy likes a challenge. Is it going to come out good? I don't know. Using As I Am's rosemary collection, the shampoo, the conditioner, rosemary water, the styling mousse. It's going to increase moisture. It's going to ease when we're combing through it. So we ain't breaking no comb. Throw in the classic smoothing gel. Wash your hair. Condition it. You can already see the curls starting to pop with just conditioner alone. My guy's hair was thirsty. Drenching this guy in water. I'm giving him a drink of water. Everybody's a drink of water today finger detangle first then i'm going in with a y2 comb on clean conditioned hair that's when i'm gonna go in with the mousse water is your best friend keep wetting the hair the hair needs to be completely soaked for this to work i'm not just styling with the mousse you see me literally smoothing it into his hair and working it in small sections you cannot just slap it on top of your head smoothing in the gel then i'm literally just twisting his hair around my finger but small strands I did not know this was gonna look this good you need to shake your hair to loosen up your curls watching this guy shake his head was actually the saddest thing i've ever watched in my life he was literally like what we're on a different level don't be up in the comments saying homeboy doesn't have 4c hair go back to the beginning of the video drop it in the comments what hair type you want to see me do next for colored girls with 4a to 4c hair who've attempted relaxers when shea moisture is not enough in july of 2015 i cut my shoulder length relaxed hair completely off the new sphere shape i was rocking was maybe an allusion to the fact that my world was changing learning to embrace the same parts of me that i had learned to hate for the previous 20 years because they don't teach little black girls how to love themselves in the suburbs or anywhere else for that matter because black hair gets matted napped and knotted given grades based upon behavior good hair doesn't get put in the corner or cornrows need to be tame because it broke the comb little black girls get their hearts broken every day though I once read somewhere growing up as a black girl in America is like being raised in a house and never seeing your picture on the wall. Then along came a little company called Shea Moisture, whose humble beginnings began on the street corners of Harlem, hustling products that were made for the people of Harlem and Detroit and the south side of Chicago. People who were brown like me, little black girls, could grow up with a little hope that their new growth was not a menace to them being considered beautiful. Finally, a product that wasn't made from petrolatum and lye that we could rely on. And then fast forward to April 2017, when the same company who had given black women so much hair care relief, whose name black women had exalted, spouted how the cost of their products was worth it, sister girling their friends on how to get the same curls made an ad campaign about hair hate. Featuring speaking parts of four women, three of them white, one racially ambiguous, the curliest paper bag passer described how someone once threw paper in her hair. I wonder if her parents also decided to put a relaxer and weave in it at the age of three. The other three white women, one described how she hated her hair so much that she dyed it blonde for seven years. I wonder if she ever had to fear not having a job because she was a redhead or how her man leaving her when her roots began to show. I wonder how many times people asked her to show proof that she wasn't really a blonde and if, she, if that was her real hair. When she wanted to see her hair in its natural state, did she have to chop it all off and embrace the same thing that people claim was ugly? Did she feel like a boy at times? 
Did she look at her curls and whine that they weren't growing fast enough? Was her ugly stage a whole 12 months? Did whole companies get their start by targeting redheads that should go blonde? Because black women are never allowed to have anything for ourselves, not even our anger. Because out of the thousands of hair care products that are marketed to everyone but us, we finally had some healthy representation in the aisles. Shea Moisture was my go-to choice for hair care products, and now I just have to be more wise. Thank you.